did this quintessentially American style of masculinity become a regular style reference for designers and brands as disparate as Raph Simmons, Supreme, YSL, Balenciaga, Karl Lagerfeld, D Squared and even Tokyo's Children of the Discordance. Season after season, we see the design of runways populated with retakes on the iconography of the cowboy. Cowboy motifs such as denim shirts, wide cut denim jeans, big belt buckles, cowskin fabrics, cowboy hats, cowboy boots, chaps, chambray shirts, bandanas, leathers, plaid shirts and cropped jackets. So there is a mix of the kind of refined American uh, uh, culture from the early years of the 19th century but put into the 21st century because we have, it's an idea, it's a feeling. The cowboy, as we know it, actually came from the traditions of the vaquero working riders in northern Mexico. But in the case of the old west cowboy, how he became quite so cool starts with Hollywood. And there is probably no more iconic film than the original Magnificent Seven. A remake of Akira Kurosawa's Seven Samurai. Aru Sankan no Chisa na Murani. Samurai no Haka ga Yotsu Naranda. Yashin to Komyo ni Tsukareta Kyoki no Jidai ni Mattaku Meiri o Kaeri ni. And then Cowboys got a big boost when Philip Morris borrowed the soundtrack from The Magnificent Seven and created Marlborough Country. Come to where the flavour is. Come to Marlborough Country. and the Marlboro Man became an advertising icon that existed for almost 50 years. And even decades after the cowboy was banned from the airwaves, Marlboro Cigarettes remains the world's most popular brand. The samurai, the cowboy, could be said to be the same famous Jungian archetype, a romantic image that speaks to us on a deep emotive level. Cowboy style is deeply connected to the root of what makes menswear so attractive. The desire for a sense of belonging, a self-governed degree of masculinity, and at its core, an unyielding sense of purpose and function. <laughs>